you. Well, there it is. Okay. So, uh, oh, I should have prepped my slides before I start wasting time. Um, do, do, or do I have them already? Google Home. There we go. And I'm Marion. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, welcome to Google Home Automation with Drupal. Uh, my name is Matt Winstow. I'm the co founder and CEO of GoFront Labs. Uh, and I've been doing stuff with Drupal for the better part of the last decade. Uh, or actually a little bit more now, which is really depressing to think about. <laughs> okay, first warning. I'm going to be saying the words something Google a whole lot during this presentation. If your phone is set up to listen or respond to that, I'm going to be screwing with it. So uh, if you want to turn your phone off, go ahead. Uh, but I will be using the OK Google keyword a whole lot. So, warning number two, I think SASE robots are hilarious. Uh, so a lot of the air handling that I have with my presentation involves the robot being really sassy. So it's perfectly okay to laugh. It's perfectly okay to, you know, be maybe just a little bit insulted by it. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I've, I've programmed some default responses here that are a little sassy. Uh, so, all right. Uh, so I'm going to cover a little bit about what the Google Assistant is. Uh, I just need my how it works. How do we get the thing to show up there? Is there any view? No, I don't want to do that. Oh, I'm mirroring though. Okay, I'm just going to go back and forth. Okay, so the Google Assistant. Who here doesn't know what it is? Okay, everybody knows what it is, so I can skip skip that section. All right, so Google is uh, the Google Assistant. It's basically competitive in Siri, and it's always this name. Uh, so this is what we call a Google Home, which is basically a physical representation of a Google Assistant. Uh, you can ask it questions. You can ask it to do things if you have some home automation stuff set up. Uh, it can just play music if you just want to use it as a speaker. Uh, it's pretty cool. So, um, I got it because I wanted to, you know, control some lights in my house and want to be able to use the Google Play thing to, uh, to connect to all my Chromecasts and, you know, I just, in general, wanted to, like, live in the future, basically, right, the Star Trek computer in my house. Um, but after a certain point, uh, I was like, man, I really wish I could do, like, a little bit more than that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, being a developer, I was like, I bet you I could probably write some code. And as it turns out, I could. Uh, so um, what I've done is I've investigated uh, some sort of different ways to sort of interact with it. And Google's recommended way is through this service called API.ai. And I'm just going to bring up this sort of three-minute uh, introductory video. I don't know if the audio is going to play loud enough for you to hear it, but we'll see what happens. Welcome to API.ai. Over the next few minutes, I will show you how to get started with our platform. Okay, that's clearly not going to work. All right, so I thought I'd go through the HTML. Um, so what else? What I'll say is, if you're interested in playing with API.ai before you get started, really watch this video because it explains some really important concepts um, right off the bat. Uh, those being intents, entities, uh, contexts, uh, but basically what actions are and agents are. Uh, so. Uh, I'll put a, there's a link, clearly there's a link in the video to watch this, so I will uh, I'll let you guys watch that afterwards rather than me leaning into the speaker here. No, don't. There we go. Okay. I just need my notes here. Okay. So the most important thing that I have to, uh, about the API and AI thing, I'm really bad at slides, but I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, so what I need, uh, the most important thing when I was reading up on the documentation on how to actually interact with this thing was that uh, all the docs assume that you actually know the terminology. Now, some of us may have encountered this before reading Drupal docs. Uh, so uh, once you've mastered what they're talking about, the docs become a lot clearer. And the, uh, 
unfortunately, there wasn't really a good sort of like intro thing other than that video, which sort of explained the basics. And then once I tinker around for a bit, I sort of said, oh, okay, that's what you mean. That's literally an entity. So as you would sort of understand it. So um, take, take the time, watch it, and then read up on what it is. So uh, the concepts you want to master are entities, intents, actions, contexts, and agents. Um, it's a lot like Drupal, you know, an entity is a thing that sort of stores stuff, it has a structure. Uh, intents are, are a little, little more unique to this, these are things you want it to do. Uh, actions are basically, you know, reactions to what's actually happening, and contexts are, uh, it's stuff about the conversation. So we'll, we'll, we'll explore that a little bit uh, in, in a few minutes. It's basically, it gives you, so you can have follow-up questions, so you can ask, you know, uh, something something Google what is uh, you know what's the weather like today and then in, in, in Ottawa and then I could follow up and say with another question being like okay what's the weather going to be like tomorrow because the context was set that I'm in Ottawa on the previous con previous call it knows when I just say what's the weather like tomorrow it doesn't need to ask you where are you and so it can imply that as part of the conversation um, so and I just want to zoom this in a bit because it's really important slides, the only important slide. So when I was getting started with this, uh, I tried to go a little too big in my ideas. Like, oh, I could get it to like talk to this thing and then make it turn that on. And then if I'm like, if I'm passing this geospatial fence thing, I can make it do blah, 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 blah. And it's just, okay. You know what, just start simple. Start with like a very, very, very simple goal. Uh, make sure, and we'll get into this once we get into the API interface. Configure your defaults, because there's some default actions and default responses that you can make it do. Set up those first, uh, because uh, it'll sort of teach you a little bit of how this thing is expected to work. And then once you've spent all that time and you've configured a thing and you've actually got it to, to do something, you'll never really have learned how to do it right. So throw it all away and do it all over again, because uh, that's what I ended up doing. Uh, but, or if your stuff is perfect off right off the bat, good for you. So. Do, 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 do. The, uh, the other thing that I uh, want to mention is, so API.ai is over here. It's a service that, that allows you to have a natural language conversation, but it's not specific just to the Google Assistant. Uh, their APIs let you talk to Alexa, you can talk to uh, Slack, it's like a chatbot. Uh, you can integrate with Facebook Messenger for whatever reason. Um, so you can, uh, it's, a, it's a general interface, a general net, generalized natural language interface that you can actually connect to various assistants. So the work you're doing is not limited to just Google. You can make Google specific uh, uh, connections, but uh, it's, it's usable with other stuff. Um, okay, so let's do a little walkthrough here. Uh, let's go here, pi.ai. console. Alright, so let's create a uh, let's just create a new agent, pretend I've never done this before. So when you first set this up, your agent name centers the name of your project, so what you want it to do. Uh, let's make this my uh, video game uh, lookup tool. Okay, fine, I'm sorry. Video game look up you can adjust like you know and cannot contain white spaces you can have just done that for me Google thank you very much come on internet last time I presented the internet it was not playing nice with me hey all right so there you go I have officially created something that can talk to Google home I have nothing else to do you're done drop mic and walk away no um, so this is what I was talking about with your set of defaults. So when you create a new project, the, uh, the first intents that you get, so the, 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 the actions you can act, ask it to do are the, the two default ones that come with it. So a fallback event, this is when, like, you know, you've asked Siri to do something, and then she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. So that's what the fallback event is. It doesn't know what you asked it, and so this is what it will say uh, uh, whoops, when it... Uh, as a reaction to that. So it says, I didn't get that, and say it again, uh, sorry, blah, blah, blah. So it gives you a whole bunch of things. So you can set this up so that when you ask it a question, it doesn't know what to do, it'll actually give you a response. Okay, move back. 
Come on. Intense. There we go. And then there's the default welcome intent. So sometimes, uh, for those who were here when the game started, uh, you can say, okay, let's play a, a game. Uh, it'll have a big introductory, sort of like, uh, sort of explaining the rules, explaining what, what, what's about to happen. Not all actions require this sort of like welcome message, but more complicated ones can sort of guide you to like, basically what you can say next, or um, what you can, uh, how to direct uh, the conversation to the next intent or to the, to the next desired uh, action. So let's create a, uh, a basic intent here. Uh, let's plus. Okay, so um, I'm gonna say, what's your favorite game? All right. I don't really need any actions. Now I'm gonna give it a response. Uh, so let's say I want to say my favorite game is Super Mario Bros. Okay. I'm gonna hit save. It does its machine learning, whatever stuff. And then so now I can try it and say, what's your favorite game? My favorite game is Super Mario Brothers. Yay! It works. So, so this is the most basic intent. So you can have a fixed question and a fixed uh, response. Uh, you can have different, the more things you give it as far as what the user says, the smarter it can be to sort of pick up on variations on that sentence. Um, um, like, I think, uh, let's find out if this works. What game is your favorite? My favorite game is Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, so you can see the natural language thing is actually, it's learning, it's picking up on, on basically, it, it knows that I, I don't have to say exactly that. It, it sort of pick, it figures that, that out. And that's an important concept for later when we actually uh, have it start talking to Drupal. Okay, um, so the next thing we want to look at are what we call entities. And for anybody who has used Drupal, everybody here is a Drupal dev, played with Drupal, knows what an entity is in Drupal 7? Yes? Okay, so basically you're creating entities. So I can be like, you know, this is a video, this is a video game. Is this going to complain about spaces? Yes, it is going to continue. All right, save. So we have our entity type or our bundle, as it were. Uh, and then you can add specific ones. So you can add Super Mario. Uh, and then you can give it, uh, the nice thing is you can actually give it synonyms. So, um, so you can say Mario Bros. Yes, I'm aware those are two very different games, but we're not going to get into like, the little minutia right now. Um, we're going to uh, uh, say uh, Super Nintendo Bros. Because I've heard parents misname things sometimes. And they can do other stuff like, you know, like Tetris. Um, I don't know, Halo, there we go. Hmm? Contra, there we go. Contra, and then we'll put in a Super C. There we go. So I've created an entity. And it's a big one. So now if I go back to my intents, what's your favorite game? So now what I can do uh, is, so where the word game is, I can actually turn this into sort of like a variable. So if I highlight it, I can choose video game. So now this is, this is an argument. And uh, then you can have actions, and then you can actually have in the response, you can reference a value. So instead of just saying Super Mario Bros. all the time, I can get to say dollar sign video game. So uh, let's just change this from trying favorite game. Uh, uh, do you like game. And blah, 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 blah. This is my favorite. So if I save this and I ask it, I forget what I told it, I was allowed to ask it. Okay. Do you like Halo? Halo is my favorite. Yeah. So now you have a now you have a really you know a digital parrot basically you have to just to agree with you all the time you know you always want to play the same game it's fantastic all right so that's how any of these work um, next uh, we're gonna look at uh, let's see here so 
just to recap, so your agent is your, basically your project. The intents are the things you want to let it, tell it to, to respond to when you ask it to do stuff. Your entities are things that, uh, that you're describing. So the really common one is like, okay, they have music as a, as a thing, so then song is, is a type of, uh, is a sub-entity and that sort of stuff. And uh, I don't know if you'll notice down here, so uh, you can see the parameter is Halo, but if I set up an action here, which is just, you know, uh, selected game, and I hit save again, and I'm gonna ask you, okay, do you like Halo? Halo is my favorite. Yeah, all right. So uh, you can see the next action it would have triggered is selected game. And why that's important is we can actually set up contexts uh, to view game on the outbound. So if I wanted to write a follow-up uh, uh, question, when this finishes talking, the video game that we were talking about is still is, is still basically active. Um, and it could, it could uh, basically fall into the next intent. So what we're do, we're going to create a follow-up intent for this. So I'm going to go back to my intents page. I'm going to do add follow-up intent. Uh, let's try the yes one. So you can see here, uh, Okay, well anyways, uh, I guess yes doesn't really make much sense in this case. So anyways, the context, you can see here this intent will only run if video game is in the active context. Uh, so as a user, I can't ping, I can't ask, I can't trigger this intent directly. I have to go through the first one first to load up what game we're talking about, and I can have a follow-up conversation being like, you know, I'm just going to create a custom one uh, because, yeah, yeah, okay. Because uh, this is a lot, makes a lot more sense when you actually uh, custom. Uh, um. When was that released? Hmm? When was that released? Sure. Then I got a building release date, and I said, look it up. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know all the ones for that game, for sure. For Halo? No idea. Save. Okay, so let's try this. I'm just going to sit down and learning. Okay, good. Do you like Halo? Nope, I have to hit the button first. Do you like Halo? Halo is my favorite. All right, now you can see the active context that we have this video game. And then if I say, when was it released? In the past. Yeah. <laughs> That's technically correct. As I said, sassy answers, sassy robots. Um, so, but I, if I clear the reset the contexts and I say, um, when was it released? You can see it used one of the the failure. Uh, I missed that. I missed that. And so it used one of the failure uh, con con uh, intents that we saw because it doesn't it doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about. It's all like oh, what game. So. So that covers your agent, that covers your intents, covers your entities, and it covers your contexts. Now we're gonna get into the, I guess, the fulfillment part. And this is where Drupal sort of comes in. So all of these things are all being processed locally, um, but you have the option to use a webhook to, uh, to actually fulfill uh, answers. So this can either uh, use a webhook to fill in the context, or it can just be straight up send it the data, and then whatever response you get back, it'll, it'll read it out. Um, but the webhook part is what allows you to, uh, this is what lets me tie Drupal into things. So let me go back to my slides real quick. Okay, I had a whole demo that I was going to do. Well, I did the other one instead. Okay, so Drupal fits into this. To da Drupal. Alright, uh, Drupal fits into this by using a, a couple of modules. So, big surprise, there's a module for that. Uh, there's the chatbot API uh, module. Uh, let's go Drupal chatbot API. Someone was so kind to write for me. This was released like, I think like three days after I decided to do this presentation earlier in the summer. So I was like, all right, you did my work for me. Um, 
So what it is, it's a generalized API that actually allows Drupal to, uh, to have a webhook callback location uh, that it'll parse the JSON payload. Uh, and by default, it supports the Alexa API and it supports the API.ai callbacks as well. Um, he's done a lot of work. You can actually uh, create some plugins. Um, the Drupal console thing does some stuff. Uh, he's got some, some sort of basic um, views integration, so you can actually have it spit back a list of things. So you can ask it how many views are in this list, and then it'll, it'll spit it back out. Um, but at the most basic uh, component, there's four sites using it. I'm one of them. Uh, <laughs> so this is, this is how we uh, use this. So it's all Drupal 8. Uh, you could just as easily do this in 7. It's literally just a JSON payload uh, that you need to parse, so the services module can do this uh, just as well. All right, so why did I use Drupal? Because I know Drupal and there's a module. Uh, but like I said, it's just JSON, it's just where you can write it with the raw PHP, you can do whatever you want. I just use Drupal because I know it. Um, okay, let's go to the documentation here. That's right, we're going to RTFM in real time. Um, the other reason I, I actually chose to use this is because I actually wrote down how to use it. Uh, which is a little rare uh, in the Drupalverse uh, when it comes to brand spanking new modules. My guess is he wrote down for his own use and uh, decided to share with the world. So there's this custom intent page, and this is where I started. The, the default ones were, you know, they work, but uh, I wanted to get into writing some, some, some custom stuff right off the bat. It's all the, the, the instructions are right here. They're linked to in the, uh, in the presentation. Uh, I won't go over all of the minutia about how to set this up, but uh, I will, I'll cover the, the important bits uh, when we get to the, the, the terminal. So it's, it's nicely documented, and I'm planning on actually, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, actually contributing some updated examples just for what place where I got lost. Okay, live coding time. That's where it's all gonna go to hell. All right, so I'll go to my terminal. R.W.H.T.M.L. Barbecue. There is, there, there's going to be yes, some stuff. So the um, the way you actually generate a plugin for this thing, once you have it installed on your Drupal 8 site, uh, he wrote actually a Drupal console plugin. So it'll literally walk you through. It'll literally walk you through once you can see it, uh, generating a new plugin so you can have a new callback created. So you just enter the name of the module you want it to go into. So I'm going to put barbecue monitor because that's the thing I was going. You got a class name, so BBQ monitor sample. Demo. I guess sample demo is a little redundant. Uh, enter the intent, label, or short description. Um, I don't know, sample demo. Okay, so here's where it's important. This is what I did not get the first time. So this. Uh, this thing here that the value you're about to enter in has to be the same name oops, you gave your actual agent, okay? Oh, you guys can barely read that. So basically, if I, if I wanted to link this up, I need to type in video dash in dash lookup as my, um, or no, 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 forget everything I just said. It's the intent. The intent name has to be what you put in there because each intent is a plugin. Uh, as part of this API. So I need to type in what's your favorite game. So that question mark is going to cause me some problems, and so is this. Save. So this needs to be what you put into that field because this will map this plug into that particular intent, and that's how the webhook is going to work. Okay? Yes, I want to confirm. Yay. Yeah. All right. And then it created me a file here, which I will open up for your viewing pleasure. Shut up about nano, if anybody's gonna give me an attitude about it. Okay, so it uh, uses a standard namespace, it uses this, blah, 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 and it sets you up with this uh, barbecue monitor sample demo, extends this, and then here's the response uh, function. So you set your intent response, which in this case is Hello World, so I'm just gonna change it to Hello Drupal North. The display card, I actually don't know what this does. I always just set the value to the same thing. Uh, it seems like you can give it variations, I guess. I, I Usually it just reads the first intent response, though, so. All right. 
And the, uh, you remember earlier the, the whole naming of the stuff, so my favorite part of Drupal 8 is, okay, so we have these annotations above the, the, this class function, and you can see here the intent ID has actually been put in there. So that's why it's important to, uh, to actually get the same name that you have in the intent in API.ai as you do inside of Drupal, because uh, this is how it does the mapping to that function. So if you love annotations, it's good for you. Okay. All right. So let's exit that. And if I go back to here, and I'm going to enable fulfillment with the webhook. S. Oh, that's another thing. Has to be SSL. So, uh, whatever it's talking to, it has to be a valid SSL certificate. So, if you use Let's Encrypt or something like that to get yourself a valid cert, rmq.cframs.ca slash. Oh my god, I don't remember. But I have it set up on my other thing. So, give me two seconds here. Also, finding this URL in their documentation was nowhere. So I had to actually go look through the code to figure out. So uh, that if there's anything this, this uh, I'm going to add to there, it's that um, that freaking callback URL. Uh, basic auth, we need to copy it. Uh-oh. I think it's demo. <laughs> sure. Demo. Yeah, we'll find out. Uh, headers. Uh, it's it's applica content dash type application slash JSON. You have to do it, um, and you want to enable it for all. Hit save. Okay, if I typed in the wrong password here, uh, then we will find out in a second. So I'm gonna go back to my intent. I'm gonna go back to what's your favorite game. Uh, I'm going to update the fulfillment. I'm going to say use the webhook. I'm going to hit save. And it should, if it actually reaches the site, uh, whatever I ask it, it should actually spit out hello Drupal North. If the authentication works. Otherwise, it should give me a failure uh, callback. So, what's your favorite game? Yeah, okay, so that password was wrong. Anyways. So once, as you can see here, once I'm connected to the webhook, uh, I'm using the webhook for fulfillment. So instead of actually going through this, the, the, this workflow here, it's going to ask Drupal instead and then come back. So yeah, so that's the basics on how to set up a, a uh, uh, what's it called? Like your first intent, I guess, as it were. So one other question that I thought people might ask is, why not just use if this, then that? Uh, anybody, everybody here familiar with IFTTT, yeah, okay. So, uh, one, you're dependent on a third party service, so, you know, you got that. Um, two, uh, I really wanted to customize the workflows and I couldn't do all of the customizations I really wanted to do with IFTTT. Um, uh, some manufacturers, like for instance, the light bulbs I have at home, don't work with IFTTT directly because TP Link doesn't want their light bulbs to work with, I don't know. So, I've sort of reverse engineered some of the, the, the web calls it needs to do, now I can get Drupal to talk to it. Um, but IFTT is much better for sharing workflows. So if you do know it and do want to use it, I, I highly recommend it, it works very well. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's get to some demos that I, act, that I actually wrote that actually work. Let's switch to barbecue. So I'm a big fan of cooking. Uh, it was actually what I was going to do uh, instead of going to computer science until I saw how much it costs to go to culinary school. Uh, so then I got a practical degree apparently. So, uh, so what I've done is my Drupal site. Uh, here we go. Um, Alright. So what I've done is I've set up a Drupal site where I'm storing information about recipes that I like, but also about certain ingredients that I'm going to use, that, that I like using with uh, on barbecue. I've also stored some information about uh, barbecues themselves. So these, uh, the Drupal entities you see here, they sort of map to the entities I have set up on, on the API AI site. So I've set up various meats 
in a in a taxonomy. So I got chicken, beef, beef briskets, pork, blah blah blah, that sort of thing. Uh, I've set up uh, some barbecue grills. So uh, different types of things you want to cook on the barbecue are, are much easier, much better to do on certain types of grills. Uh, and in the content section, I've created a couple of recipes uh, that uh, are uh, linked to the type of meat you would want to use, and the type of barbecue you would want to use, the type of temperatures you would want to hit, the cooking temperature, the instructions, and a brief description. So the, over, the, the end goal being so that it, like, if I want to cook something and I can't make up my mind, and my wife gives me the stock answer, it's like, well, I don't care, you just pick something. Uh, I can just be like, all right, fine, Google can decide. And then I just ask it, and then everybody's, everybody's happy. Or everybody's unhappy, depending on what it chooses. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go back to here. And I've uh, enabled the integrations with Google Assistant, you can see here. Um, there's some nuance with that. So, uh, for you to publish any of this stuff like, publicly, it actually has to get approved by Google because it goes into their store of things that you can actually get it to do. So if I do want this to work globally, I actually have to set up the site to allow, I guess, other users somehow. I, I, don't, I haven't got to that yet. Um, but it does have a test mode. So I'm going to turn on the test mode. And say, okay, I'm in test mode. Let's go. And here's the test simulator. Um, so one thing to note, if you buy this in Canada, or if you win this one, yeah, uh, the language that you have here in the, uh, in the test application, see how it says English US, uh, this debug mode only works if you're US English or UK English. For some reason it doesn't understand Canadian English. I don't know. So I had to switch it to the uh, angrier Google lady, I guess is it were. They, they have very subtle tone differences in them. So. Um, yeah, so the first thing, and it's connected to this, so I should be able to just talk to the Google Home that's actually here, but I have to trigger test mode, so here's where your phones lose their minds if, you're, if, you, if you didn't follow the warning at the beginning. Okay, Google, talk to my test app. Since I couldn't verify your voice just now, I can't connect you to my test app at the moment. You can either give it another try or go to the Google Home app and retrain the voice model. Yeah, maybe. Okay, Google, talk to my test app. All right, here's the test version of my test app. It's grilling time. All right. What do you want to cook? Say that again. Hold on. Sorry, can you say that again? <laughs> Okay, what's the best temperature to cook pork tenderloin to? A pork tenderloin is typically cooked to a minimum of 54 degrees Celsius. All right. So if we go back to my Drupal site, you can see... Sorry, could you say that again? Yeah, okay. If you go back to your, my Drupal site, uh, you can see here that in taxonomy, under meat, and then under pork, I have pork tenderloin. And I've programmed in target temperature 54 degrees Celsius. So she went, she did the mapping from the entity that I have in API.ai and mapped it to here. So let me show you how that works. Do you guys still hear me or do I have to turn the mic back on? You're not being recorded with the mic on. I think you is. No, yeah, this thing right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so if I go to my entities, uh, you can see a barbecue grill and I have meat. And inside of meat, I have all of these uh, examples. So you can see here, I have pork tenderloin, and I also have a few sort of variations on it. So if I ask it, what is a, a you know, how, what temperature should I cook a pork medallion to? Uh, it'll actually, uh, when it makes the API call to Drupal, it's not gonna use the synonym value, it's gonna use the actual defined name value, so pork tenderloin. So, and that's important because in the code that actually runs on the Drupal site, uh, let me just open up. IP monitor, uh, nope, which one is it? Target temperature, there we go. If I scroll down, so when it receives the request, I get this intent slot, so this is the variable that, that, that the context that's been set when I ask it the question, that, get pa that gets past the Drupal, 
and it does a taxonomy term load on the name of the meat that I just asked about. So it goes, gets the root meat type entity from API.ai. It happens to match the actual name inside of Drupal. Uh, I check to see if it, it's actually an array or actually got something. And then I put a message through the T function here because you should consider uh, internationalization. Um, uh, and it's, it spits out, it has the whole sentence here. Uh, it sets the intent response, sends the intent card, and then uh, then the the uh, the chatbot API takes care of, re of returning the response back to uh, to Google, or to the API to AI stuff, which then talks to Google. Uh, so if I do another test here, okay, Google, talk to my test app. All right, let's get the test version of my test app. It's grilling time. What temperature should I cook brisket to? What kind of meat are you cooking? Oh, shouldn't get that one. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay. Okay, Google. Talk to my test app. Sure. Let's get the test version of my test app. It's grilling time. There's actually more responses to that, but she was okay. Uh, what can I make with brisket? You can make root beer brisket. This braised brisket recipe swaps the slow cooker for the barbecue. It's sweet and spicy at the same time. And you can use smaller, leaner cuts of brisket and get a great result. Still takes a while to make, but about half as long as a normal smoked brisket. This recipe comes from bakedbrie.com. Okay, I got a little wordy on that one. Okay, um, so the way that worked, uh, you notice I just said the word brisket. Uh, but if I go back to uh, my Drupal site, I you. didn't get that. Okay, all right. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Sassy robots. Nope. Yep. Okay. You notice uh, in here it's actually called beef brisket, which is subtle difference, but it's still a very important difference when you talk about machines. Um, so in the uh, when it asks you ask the question through here, actually I'll do it through here. Um, what can I make with brisket? Okay, so there it is. So you can see here in the context you have meat and the value turned into beef brisket rather than just the word, the raw word brisket that I, that I actually asked it. So this context value gets sent up to Google or to Drupal through this JSON object and then here's the fulfillment response that came back from the webhook call. Um, so, yeah. Any questions so far? Is there any way to manage those synonyms uh, actually from the Drupal site? Not that I've found, okay. but I'm sure there is. I'm, I'm still really new to it. Like, uh, I had two presentations suggested for today, uh, and then th this was just my, this was the other one that I, I thought about doing. And then Pat's like, no, do your other one instead. I was like, okay. Uh, so I'm only like two months into the playing with Google stuff. Um, but I'm sure there must be some sort of, like there's, uh, you don't actually do have to do everything through this UI. You can actually uh, download like a copy of this configuration and then start playing with it in code. There are uh, libraries for all sorts of different languages. Um, and uh, I'm sure in there, there's gotta be something that they can do it. Uh, there's also this training thing. I don't know what it does. And analytics, I also don't know what it does either. Presumably something to do with analytics. Uh, yeah, so uh, if I go back to my Drupal site, I'm going to show you the, so that recipe select intent is a little more complicated than just the straight up ask me for a text line return. Because I mean, that one's kind of easy. It's send it this text value, uh, have it match a taxonomy term and spit back what, what was in the actual, uh, uh, one of the taxonomy term fields. The uh, picking a recipe one is a little bit more complicated, but not that much uh, recipe. So in the process function, um, I have the request, I get the, the meat value, I do the thing, I do the load, blah, 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 that sort of thing. And then I actually call views get view result. So what I, what I did on the Drupal side is I set up a view that just uh, with the, so I don't know why I'm telling you about it, I could show it to you. Uh, let's do, do that instead. Back to here, structure, going back to views. And I have, where did it go? Recipe, there it is. So, uh, the view actually just, it takes the taxonomy term ID, the meat type, 
as a uh, contextual argument. Uh, it grabs me any published content of type barbecue recipe, and it randomizes the, 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 uh, the order, and then it spits back exactly one value. So when I ask Google, you know, give me a recipe or whatever, it pings Drupal, Drupal randomly picks a recipe and, ran and then delivers that to me so I have something to do, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, so, uh, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to use Drupal because I can, I can build these more complicated workflows and, and reactions and things uh, in Drupal, keep the conversations and the entities and all that kind of stuff inside of the API.ai stuff pretty simple, uh, but still do some really, some more advanced stuff. Um, yeah, like, for instance, one of the things I wanted to do is uh, if I ask it, what can I make with this meat on this grill, uh, I have a second contextual filter, which is the barbecue type. So it can give me a sort of an optimized type of cook. It, like let's say I'm just using a camping stove, don't tell me to cook a, you know, a, a beef brisket like smoked on for 12 hours on a, you know, I'm not gonna be able to make that. So I can add some extra stuff in here to try and make things a little bit smarter. All right. So the other thing that I that I did with it, I'm not going to demo because I didn't get time to finish the hardware required for it. That's right, hardware. Uh, let's see here. Where's my Drupal site again? So at home, I actually have a uh, a barbecue thermometer uh, that is uh, that is RF and it, and it monitors every 12 seconds. It'll report back to this other barbecue monitor that that tell, it tracks the temperature of the barbecue and the temperature of the uh, of the meat. And what I wanted to do is uh, pick up that signal uh, using an Arduino and then uh, with a little RF receiver and then have it make a webhook request to the Drupal site and then register the temperature of the meat at that time. And I do that with the message API. So I'm going to add a new message here and say, let's say the barbecue temp is at 350. No, not Celsius, that's too hot. 175. The food temp is at uh, 62. And create. And then I get a message con. This is the barbecue. Uh, it's currently set to 170 degrees C. The food is at 62. Uh, and now if I go to latest reading, which is another view, it uh, stores the, the timestamp, the barbecue temperature, and the food temp. Um, in, in that reading. So this view gets called by another uh, intent that I have on a different uh, account. Uh, and I, so, I could, so I could conceivably sit in my living room and say, okay, Google, what's the temperature of the barbecue? And it would tell me. Are you? Yeah, okay. No, don't do that. Um, or I could ask it what temperature the food is at. Uh, and then the other thing I, I could want to be able to do is have temperature trends. So I would have a chart on the website I could track to see if my barbecue temperature is doing this. Well, it's like nice and level, so I haven't ruined the food. Um, and then also be able to just ask Google without having to get up and go do it. Lazy, but it's fine. Um, yeah, so those are the, the, the two active projects I'm sort of doing with, uh, with Google right now. So, some other ideas I've had now that I've sort of unlocked the power of Drupal to work with my API.ai stuff, uh, I wanted to link in some other uh, services, like I said, that my light bulbs aren't supported by IFTTT, so I'm just going to make Drupal talk to them because they're all IP based. Um, I want to. I, I bought a, uh, a garage door opener that runs its own little web server. That if you just ping it, it'll actually open and close the door. Uh, so I, I want to make it do the, through the thing, through Drupal, through the whatever. Um, some Raspberry Pi stuff. I don't know. Dave will probably end up doing those ones for me. Um, I want to. I want to try and learn a little bit more about some more advanced conversations to like have more more involved like uh, like use use the intents and context to have like more. I don't know. I just want to get better at it. Uh, one thing I really wanted to do for today, but I, I just couldn't get it to work in time, was to be able to ask, okay, what's the status report for my website? So I could just say, okay, okay, Google, how's Drupal doing? And uh, and then it would be able to respond saying, oh, you have like three warnings on your status page. You should go ch have a look at it. Um, the garage door state, and the eventual goal, like the demo we were doing this uh, earlier, is uh, I have like I don't know, like four or five hundred like old video games sitting in my basement. I have the, the burden of choice now, uh, so I want to be able to just say, hey, it's just like with the, with the recipes, we be able to ask you, okay, what game can I play? If, you know, there's there's two of us and want to play a racing game, and it just sort of pick something for me. So it's really just to offload some brain power, 
and just have the internet decide things for me. You know, what the hell? Why, why not? So, um, the next big thing though that I want to write for that chatbot API as far as code improvements go is integration with rules. Uh, I really think that having like a rules event where the webhook gets triggered, have the conditions to actually check to see if the intent uh, or uh, the entity parameters are set up right and, and do some checks and then have uh, reactions where I can, I, it, can, it can decide like what to do in like basically use rules. You know, if anybody here has used rules before, you can do a lot of business logic -y sort of stuff. And I would really, I really think that would be really neat to sort of like, sort of do what I, the IFTTT stuff does, but like really advanced inside of Drupal. Um, also be really nice if we could set up some of this logic through the UI rather than have to go through Drupal console. Um, the other thing that I'd like to do is uh, try some other chatbots. Uh, like you, as you saw here, uh, through the API to AI interface, you can actually try it there. Um, through the actions for Google, I can just type in, you know, uh, him uh, ten stand. Okay, here's the test version of my test app. It's grilling time. Yeah, so anyways, uh, because you can do, I don't know what she, she, the other day she was picking random, like, it's starting things all over the time. Now she's just picking the same stupid one. They're much funnier ones. <laughs> um, so, uh, to actually integrate it so that I don't have to necessarily, like, talk out loud to Google, I can just, like, send a message to, like, the, when they eventually release the stupid Google Assistant here in Canada for <laughs> iOS, or uh, tie it to Slack, or tie it to Facebook Messenger, or something like that. And the advantage is with API.ai, all you have to do is go to the integrations page and then just choose the one you want to turn on and then enable it. So you can see there's a lot of stuff here that's available for you to sort of integrate this thing with. That's what I mean by the, uh, the SDKs, by the way. They're, there's a lot of them. Um, go back here. All right, so that's the sum total of my presentation. Uh, super impractical, but thank you for coming anyways. If you have any questions, you can answer them now. What would be expected to uh, make this bilingual? Bilingual? Um, actually, it, it doesn't really care what language it is, other than, like, like I said, this, uh, this test app stuff won't work in anything but, okay, fine, English, Australia. Really? You like the Australian ang English? You don't like ours? Come on, man. Um, so debugging it, you'd, probably, you'd have to do it in English. Uh, but, and uh, like we did in, in the Drupal side, we actually wrapped the responses in, in, fr in the T function so you can actually get a, uh, a French response if, uh, if you want. Because there's other data in this, in this query, uh, like right here it says locale, uh, English US. You could just check the locale on the, on the request end and, and spit back out the right language so that you could actually have it work. So um, that language is for uh, speech to text? So this thing will lurk, this thing will understand uh, French Canadian, English Canadian, English basically anywhere, but it can only operate in one language at a time. So when you set it up on your phone, you have to tell it what language you actually want it to listen on. So it, it, you can't just like have a, uh, an Orleans French conversation with it where you're going back and forth from English to French. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but uh, the request data, I haven't tried it in French, so I don't know if it's going to translate it back to, yeah. like a, to the source language or not. Um, but uh, I guess you guys can let me know and then see what happens there. But I, I definitely know you do get the locale and you can, you can customize your responses based off of that. I just didn't take the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, so how do you, like, is there a way to get around using the test interface, or are you stuck using the test interface for like the route to that unless you want the world to be able to do your browser capture? That is research for next week. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm pretty like it because if I go here, if I go back to the settings and I say update draft, it says you've updated your actions, blah blah blah, the current API configuration, visit the console to finish things. So I hit visit console. It brings it here. I have to give it a name, the actions added. I have to give some information, the location targeting, and a bunch of other stuff. And then I have to submit the draft review. I don't know what that's going to do yet. So I'm just going to try it and see if Google says yes or no. Okay. Um, and then find out. So I, like, if I do have to run the site so that it's global for everyone, well, you know, I build web applications for, for a living. So I could probably set it up so it works. Um, but 
uh, yeah, so if, if you can't do that and it's only for personal projects, that would kind of su- uh, it would, it's not for personal project, kind of suck. Uh, but I'm still curious to see if I can get it to go. So there can be multiple contexts active at a given point. So yep. the natural language thing can figure out whether I'm talking about it or a he and distinguish which context I might be referring to. Yeah, and that's one of the things I want to get better at. But I can show you here, uh, if I do the recipe select. So you see how there's a counter? And I think so each context has what's called a lifespan. Uh, so it'll daisy chain into a further context up to five times. So after a certain point, it just gets, I think the, the decision tree just gets too complicated or too CPU intensive for it to figure out what the hell you're talking about. Um, so, but you can have, as far as I can tell, there's no limit on the context, the amount of context you can have between one fall through for the other, but there is a limited lifespan. The other thing you can do, and I forgot to mention at the bottom here, uh, where do you go? You can actually have, specifically to Google, because I enabled it, you can actually have it end the conversation right there. So this intent is meant to like finish it. It's like you're just done, forget about what we're talking, don't try and pass it through, just end the conversation there and walk away. So, yeah. Mike, you had a question? Yeah, to accept question notifications, so my barbecue can be telling me when my food is ready or it's barbecue. Not as far as I know, but there are plenty of other things that I can. It's always initiated by the user. Yeah, I'd have to ask it, because I, if you think about if they had push notifications on it, like, you know, you'd have ads being pushed in your living room, I would imagine, yeah. which would kind of be annoying, because, like, I could have, like, there's, that's a whole can of worms that I think Google might. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I haven't found anything about push to those things. Uh, I think that might be on purpose. Uh, but, no. I mean, if I wanted to, like, push a thing to my phone, I could probably just use push over or something like that to just say, hey, I'm done. Uh, don't, it's on fire, or saying something like that. That's where so, rules are coming to play. Exactly, like if the temperature reaches this temperature, for the love of God, do something. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Any other question? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Is it hardware dependent, or could you send the API just to the lab file? Well, whatever integrations you want, it'll talk to it. So that webhook data, that webhook payload, uh, is not Google specific. So if you want it to talk to Twitter, uh, you can somehow get it to talk to. You can use the Twitter API to talk to the JSON thing. Um, am I understanding the question right? Am I? Yeah. 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 yeah? Okay. All right. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be Google. It can be Alexa. It can be whatever you want it to do. I think Alexa is in there. Or Cortana. There it is. And Alexa. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, well, see, the thing, and what's nice is on the Drupal side, you don't care what they're talking to you to through, right? You're just getting a webhook and you give it back an answer and then, then you're done. You might be able to tell which one you're talking to in case, you know, you want to adjust your answers because of it. I haven't looked to see if that's in the payload or not. Um, but yeah, you could set it up and then you could have it work with Alexa and Cortana and Google just as well, uh, all together, which is really why this API thing is really neat. So, anything else? Nothing, even after the game? Yeah, no questions? No? You good? Okay, well, anyways, thanks for, thanks for listening, thanks for sticking around, and I guess we'll see some of you at the after party. Which, is, by the way, is today, not tomorrow. What? Uh, yeah. Well, there's another thing tomorrow, but like the thing at the, the golf place and like the, the escape room, whatever, is tonight. I thought it was tomorrow. I might have been the only one who thought it was tomorrow, but it's apparently tonight. So, 